Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have been speaking about the uh, habitual art practices that are connected to the social norms and the regular habitual behaviors that is connected to the customs and uh, religious practices uh, very closely. Uh, there are traditions where uh, we see that there are communities who are very closely connected to each other and they are living in different places. Uh, like the previous lecture where we were focusing on places like Mithila that has a rich cultural tradition. Uh, the literary uh, resources there uh, is of a very high quality. Uh, at the same time, there are places that uh, we were covering uh, as our examples. Uh, there are um, uh, topics that are related to Bengal, Odisha and many other uh, eminent districts and uh, also uh, the states which are uh, quite prominent uh, and the traditions are also quite well known to many of us. And uh, right now I am going to focus on another tradition which belongs to a state which has newly come up and uh, but the place was there it has a very old and rich tradition that dates back to the Roka tradition and uh, that is the state named Jharkhand which is working almost uh, like a transition between uh, Bihar and Bengal. So, there are uh, some mixed tradition that we get to see in their regular practices, but it has a strong individual identity also. So, we cannot just say that it is something that grew with uh, by holding hands uh, from the other adjoining states, uh, but uh, it, it, it had a rudimentary uh, connection to a nearby rock art and the characteristic of the artworks are also very pure in nature. Uh, having said uh, pure, I try to mean certain things which is connected to the indigenous culture and uh, the paintings of Jharkhand. Uh, is abruptly spreaded. It is uh, sporadic at the same time there are cultural connections and the practitioners there belong to a very old tribe and because of that they have a focused way of looking at the, their tradition and it grew there with uh, all those uh, resources that was uh, intrinsically connected to their regular life and ritualistic practices, but the expression there uh, rather than becoming uh, aesthetic oriented, uh, they are related to many different uh, mysterious connections and that makes it um, very interesting to look at. Uh, of course, there is a decorative aspect to it, but there is another uh, very eminent uh, feature of this artwork which is connected to the uh, funerary rites. So, it is all about uh, the death, afterlife and uh, all those uh, customs and uh, the customary beliefs. Uh, they are connected to the artistic expression that they come up with. So, uh, let us focus on the first um, category that is Yamapata. Uh, we are also going to talk about the Paitkar Chitrakars and also the art practice of Jharkhand where Yamapatta is done by a community called Jadupatiyas. So, Jharkhand as a state is situated between Bihar and Bengal. The location where the practice takes place abruptly covers the whole state. Apart from the Jadupatiya and Paitkar community live ethnic and tribal communities who are inclined towards wall paintings and that bridges a stylistic gap between Madhubani painting and Patichitra of Bengal very effectively. History of the origin of Jadupatiyas who live in Dumka 
and Singhbhum district of Jharkhand is still uh, debatable as there are several opinions. However, in the context of current research, we are looking at their artworks and positioning them in the contemporary visual culture. The themes of these artworks are related to the funerary rites of the Santhar tribe. They are known as Yamapata and death remains the primary subject of these paintings. Figurative images with human forms, but initially they are devoid of eyes on them. What we saw in the picture is perhaps uh, an image of the doorkeeper of Yama or the god of death or in some other word the god of forgiveness. He has a keeper in his gate. So, after death uh, it is believed that when the dead person reaches uh, Yama before that he needs to uh, encounter this character called Chitragupta. So, perhaps this is one image where the uh, messenger of Yama uh, or the god of forgiveness sits there and he has a count of each and every scene that a person commits uh, through his life, uh, his or her life. So, uh, Chitragupta takes a count of that and on the basis of that he decides whether um, you know, he needs to be forgiven or what are the kind of punishment that uh, has to be uh, pronounced for this particular person. So, that is a belief that uh, inserts a lot of fear to the living being to keep them ethically rooted and these are the purpose that is connected to the social uh, behavior and it controls the society to a with a lot of fear fantasy. And that is perhaps uh, the factor that gives birth to uh, such interesting and effective images, which is uh, having a very strong communicative um, uh, essence into it with very strong imageries. They often uh, do not stick to the uh, naturalistic or realistic approach towards the forms, they render it into a very free manner. But the approach is a semi realistic approach. So, uh, the evolution that has taken place in the artworks they are mostly from semi abstract to semi realistic. I will come to that slowly with images, but then I am going back to the thematic uh, aspect of the same thing where the, Im the imagination, the image that gets formed with the uh, idea of Yama, the god of death or the god of forgiveness, it gives you a sense of fear at the first time and then it is all about the opposite and complementary connections of virtue and vice, uh, good and bad and it works as a complementary factor with uh, human emotion. However, there are certain things that I mentioned just now that the images are realistic, sometimes semi-realistic uh, with no sense of naturalism, but the main interesting feature is that they are mostly devoid of the eyes, uh, because it is connected to another custom where the eyes are painted much later, uh, when the Jadupatiya, the community who come into the scene after the death they feel that they are the people who have the right to uh, give sight to the people who are dead. Uh, so, the tradition has all these uh, connections which are superstitious um, in general, but that is working as an operational factor for this practice to thrive and uh, grow and then uh, move on. Jadupatiyas paint during the month of Falgun and Chaitra that spring to summer season. They are called on the occasion of a death in the family. The community believes that the Jadupatiyas are like the Brahma uh, who can give the dead person eyes to get released and travel through the darkness of death with light and eyesight that leads the dead to the heaven. They believe or even they force this people 
to make that uh, that the dead person will suffer in the darkness till the jadupatiya will intervene and uh, paint the eyes on their yama patas which are already there without the eyes uh, they are initially made uh, without eyes the jadupatiyas receive gifts that range from utensils to cattle against the performance that combines painting and singing in the corners of those painted scrolls called yamapata the jadupatiyas paint the objects that they receive the jadupatiyas live and work from the places like durguri nausar and dumka in the state of jharkhand they belong to the ethnic bengali community who speak local bengali and work for the santhal tribes they claim that the tradition is at least a century old it has been in practice since the inception of santhal tribe the largest homogeneous ethnic community in india the bengali jadupatiyas share a synergic bond with the tribal santhal since ages and they are like gurus to them it is believed that the yamaraja the god of death and forgiveness listens to the jadupatiyas and takes care of the departed souls in their journey after life like the folk painters of bengal they also use the title chitrakar or painter as the surnames or title late vasudev chitrakar has taught the art to his disciple kamalapati chitrakar a senior artist from dumka with a commanding hand nitai chitrakar has aptly made his name in the new generation nitai chitrakar ganapati chitrakar and mahapati chitrakar are among the regular practitioners the subject matters revolves around the concept of reward and punishment a bad donor getting brutal physical torture after his death the people of the god of forgiveness take out his tongue with a forceps as the common pictures show us there are people being haunted by the kalyaki ghost thus not able to relieve from the disease that is caused by the death family members of the diseased are expected to uh, satisfy the jadupatiyas with their desired gifts which are otherwise very simple and nominal there are santhal stories based on uh, kadum vinti literally meaning an appeal for misdeeds there are santhal stories based on karam vinti literally meaning and appeal for misdeeds the santhal society recognizes the artists as the funerary priests the yamapatas have songs and visual narratives arise from the memorable death events of characters from ramayana and mahabharata they modify the stories that maintaining uh, like they, they make sure that it maintains maintains the subsequent authenticities combining with existing purana uh, and the stories related to those purana stories uh, with characters like chitra group gupta the uh, the uh, assistant or the disciple of uh, the yama a brahman uh chitragupta who keeps a count of virtue and vices and thus makes decisions of the afterlife destiny of the mankind in the assembly of yamaraja the god of death the jadupatiyas often appear as characters to add to the popular epics performing the funerary rites of chakshudan uh, in those stories the the enduringly include stories related to the inception and the regenerations of the santhal tribe they make images of the first couple like adam and eve they have characters named 
Pichlu Harem and Pichlu Bure. Old man and the old lady, that it means. As they die, the scrolls have the dead bodies in the burning ghat, a jadu patiya, and the progenies of the couple offering gifts to them against their chakshudan, the bestowal of eye, uh, eyesight. Uh, that is a performance, the chakshudan performance. The name comes from jadu to jadu, that means magic, patiya means patua or the painters. The painters acknowledge that they cannot do without a guru or a master. So, it is a legacy that has to be passed on from generation to generation or you may have guru from a different community also. The exclusive character of Yamapata lies in the spontaneity of image making that is rare within the uh, regimental traditional art which is uh, towards the classical uh, conditions. So, the execution has limited scopes for individual expression as the artworks are seldom purposed for aesthetics uh, for the subject being the funerary rites. The free flowing lines, compositions and continuity of narration render a magical vivacity uh, that is too subjective to describe through limited words. Now, for this tradition, uh, how it came into the scene and how we are realizing the importance of this tradition that also needs to be realized a little bit with some data that in the year 1932, in the year 1932, Guru Sadadat in his essay, The Tiger God of Bengali Art, mentions about the Jadupatiya tradition. He compared the art from with the primitive Negro sculpture, Dat, then indicated while Negro art was extinct, Jadupatiya or the Jadupotua remains an analogous tradition still living and therefore needed required attention. William G. Archer having informed by Guru Sadhya himself uh, in 1940s accumulated a collection of Jadupatiya scrolls and published them uh, with a review by his wife uh, Major Archer. She appreciates the style of Yamapata for its salient modernity with a primitive spontaneity. According to Mildred Archer, uh, in her writing, she mentions that the color application was as dynamic and rigorous as the action painters like Jackson Pollock, William G. Archer in his book on Santhali's song and poetry, uh, The Hill of Flutes in 1974 has mentioned of Jadupatiyas. There are two other traditions that are living with the uh, mainstream Jadupatiya tradition. Uh, they are the Paitka Chitrakars, there is one community and their painting which is quite similar to the Jadupatiya paintings with a different aim they make it and also the Sohari paintings which is the paintings for uh, good luck and blessings on wall. Uh, we need to uh, discuss about these two traditions also. A similar tradition is alive in Amaduvi village of Singhum district where the artists are known as Paitkar painters. The artists are titled either as Chitrakar or painter or Gayan or singer. They work on narrative visuals based on the stories of Hindu pantheons such as Durga Pata, Kali Pata, Manasa Pata and secular scenes like Dobahu Santali dance harmfulness of deforestation, daily village life. Amadubi village was reputed for its bhajan and palakirtan performances and impressed by the talented inhabitants, Amadubi moja was allotted to them. They follow a tradition of making colors and painting scrolls similar to the Bengal folk art tradition. The tribes like Orao, Kurmi, Damru and Prajapati 
other than the santals are also indulged in their own habitual art practice surrounding the hazaribagh district in jharkhand it is believed that the wall painting tradition of this region dates back to 15000 years the assumption is based on the motifs of prehistoric isco cave paintings that resemble the living wall paintings tradition the isco cave is of an archaeological importance now located in the place named choti pahari block baragao close to hazaribag district in jharkhand the surviving evidences of this ritualistic wall paintings practiced by the female members of the agrarian families are found in bilwara located 30 km east of hazaribag they paint on the occasion of karma festival sohari is an art form of hazaribag that celebrates the return of lord rama during the diwali festival in the month of october or november they paint horses flowers birds betel leaf etc parvati devi and rupkini devi so hari painters from the region draw linear images on marriage ceremony called a cover similar to a madhubani painter to celebrate fertility another purpose of painting is to ensure protection from evil spirit the paintings are often quite graphical and the process involved is making a ground ready by repairing the surface and making it even with mud layers they apply layers of black soil that is extracted from lamp black mixed with mud beneath a layer of yellow mud they draw the images by scratching off the yellow layer with a scraper so that the black layer reveals eventually the wall paintings are energetic and stunning in their looks the portable version are made on mud coated papers following the same method and material